Are you looking for an athletic scholarship? You're in the right place. This is the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship Podcast, the longest running podcast on recruiting and athletic scholarships. We're here to help your family navigate the recruiting road all the way to an athletic scholarship. He's a recruiting expert and a dad of a D1 athlete and a newly committed high school athlete that just received an athletic scholarship. He's got a wealth of experience to share. Here's Recruit Me CEO, Brent Hanks. Welcome to episode 302 of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. This episode is a part two, or a continuation of last week's episode, Recruiting Key Points and Discussion Points. As I put last week's podcast together, I found that there was a lot of good information and went way over the 15 minutes that I normally do on the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. The Recruiting Key Points and Discussion Points are taken from the Recruit Me 3.0 Athletic Scholarship System Manual. The Recruit Me 3.0 system has a downloadable manual and workbook and is the cornerstone of the Recruit Me 3.0 athletic scholarship system. Go to recruit-me.com and click on the Recruit Me 3.0 tab for information and listen to the end of this episode to hear about the Recruit Me 3.0 combo special. Last week I hit on the recruiting points and discussion points of the seven steps to an athletic scholarship. I highlighted each of those steps and took the key points and the discussion points to bring out some of the very important recruiting items you need to add to your toolbox. And you got some in-depth discussion subjects to help you move forward. This week, I bring you key points and discussion points from the rest of the sections of the Recruit Me 3.0 manual that fill in how to implement the seven steps to an athletic scholarship. Subjects like online registries, the 10 myths about athletic scholarships, questions for college coaches, when and how to use video, choosing the right camps and showcases, registering with eligibility centers, parent-athlete teamwork, and the importance of your academics. If this episode sounds a little different, it may be because I'm putting it together in a hotel room in Evanston, Illinois. This is Parker's, my oldest son's, last home baseball series at Northwestern. So this week we celebrated Sutton's, my youngest son's, high school senior day on Tuesday. And we'll celebrate Parker's Senior College Day on Sunday. Sutton graduates on Saturday, May 21st, and Parker graduates on Sunday, June 12th. So a lot of travel and a lot of tears ahead. So let's dive into the remaining recruiting key points and discussion points taken from the Recruit Me 3.0 manual. Remember, these are only good if you take action. John Fugler, the founder of Recruit Me, would say in his episodes, action produces traction. So let's get you some action items. The first section of the step-by-step athletic scholarship system is don't fall for myths about athletic scholarships. You'll find 10 myths about athletic scholarships listed. In this section, you'll find a critical note to parents. And in this part, it says, let's talk about your involvement as a parent in the recruiting process. The manual says you must commit time to this. Your son or daughter has his or her hands full with academics and athletics. It is important that they do their best in these two areas because their ability to get a scholarship offer depends on it. You need to lead your son or daughter to contacting schools, write letters and emails, respond to coaches' inquiries, and track the communications. It's a big job and will get complex as more and more coaches respond. This can be overwhelming for your student-athlete, so they will need your help and guidance and organization. When coaches start to write and call them, Your son or daughter can get stars in their eyes and get consumed by the attention. Keep them on task and don't let them get sidetracked from their primary responsibilities, school and athletics. Much of the material in this textbook is written for the student athlete, but you will need to walk your son or daughter through each step. I really mean for every word to be written to you as well. Thanks for keeping this in mind because this is the difference between success and failure. In the myths about athletic scholarships, the key points are... There are many myths that confuse people about athletic scholarships, so you need to stay informed about what's true and what's not. Parents must commit their time in the recruiting process to help their son or daughter. Things to discuss about myths about athletic scholarships. In the Discuss It section, it asks, What myths do you believe about athletic scholarships? By following the steps in the manual of the Recruit Me 3.0 athletic scholarship system, you will learn how to contact coaches so they will respond to you how to get recruiting letters and emails, what to tell a coach about yourself and how to do so, how to respond when coaches phone the student athlete, how to save hours completing questionnaires from coaches, where online athlete registries fit in, how to keep coaches interested throughout the recruiting process, 
How and when to use videos. How to utilize athletic camps and showcases. How to keep your communication straight with dozens of coaches. How to choose the best athletic and academic programs for you. This section also has a box about there are recruiting rules. Did you know that the NCAA rules allow you only five paid recruiting trips and that you are not allowed to spend more than 48 hours on campus? Did you know that the NAI allows you to work out with the team during a, your recruiting trip? Be aware of the rules governing the recruiting process. You should be familiar with them. I encourage you to visit NCAA website at ncaa.org and the NAIA website at naia.org for the latest information. The Recruit Me 3.0 manual has a section about the 10 myths about athletic scholarships. You can hear these 10 myths in episodes 279 through 290. The next section talks about online registries. The internet is full of online registries where you can park your profile often for free. It seems like a great way to get exposure to college coaches. In fact, the more registries you are on, the more exposure. Or so it seems. This section takes a look at advantages and disadvantages of these registries and how to use them to your benefit. Some advantages are you have a place online to send coaches. Video hosting. It gives you a place to host your highlight video besides YouTube. And views. You may get some views from coaches. Some disadvantages of online registries. Many times there are just few coaches. It's passive. Sometimes there is a fee. Sometimes there are low results. And there is a lot of competition. Remember, you must take the initiative. Only the top tier athletes get noticed without putting out effort. You can get lost in the crowd. So you must put some effort forward to be noticed. If you rely on registries alone, you will violate the important principle of taking the initiative. Key points on what about online registries. An online registry can be a useful tool to use in your recruiting strategy. An online posting is not a substitute for the more proactive Recruit Me method, but is a good support. An online registry can provide a nice destination to send coaches to look at your highlight video and player profile. Things to discuss. Do you want to use an online registry? And should we pay for a premium account? The next section of the Recruit Me 3.0 manual is Know When and How to Use Video. The earlier you start contacting coaches, the more we say wait for the coaches to ask for your videos. If you are later in the process, you may want to send videos with your introductory packet. You don't have to spend a lot of money or a lot of time on videos. You can edit your own videos and you can put your videos online if you want to. I videoed my son's baseball mainly with my phone. Every sport is different, but I really got good at holding the phone horizontally with my pop socket. I could follow the baseball while watching the game without looking at the screen. I videoed the boys on every pitch they threw as a pitcher. I would video at different angles. Also, I videoed every at bat and every time they were on the bases. But I still enjoyed the game by, again, watching the game outside of my phone. I tell people I videoed for three reasons. Number one, I had no video of me playing 100 years ago. Number two, I kept a little quieter when videoing, less yelling at the boys or the umpires. And number three, for recruiting. There are video editing apps on your phone, or your son or daughter can get involved and edit these videos into two-minute highlights of their action. One thing we did was make an offensive and defensive video. Early in the recruiting process, both boys were two-way players, and we would send both these offensive and defensive videos. Then as the recruiting got drilled down, Parker's videos went to just pitching, and Sutton's videos went to just hitting and running the bases. We also developed a short video of both the boys and their basketball highlights to show their athletic versatility. Don't forget to check with your son or daughter and see if your school has a huddle account where they video their football games, their basketball games, their volleyball games, maybe even their baseball games, track and field, whatever. That way you may not have to video. Key points on knowing when and how to use videos. Generally, don't send a video link unless the coach asks for it, especially early in the recruiting process. A highly produced video is not important. The most important thing is that your video clearly shows your ability to the coach so they can make an evaluation. Things to discuss. Do we have video footage to make a video? If not, when can we shoot some? And who will put the video together and post it? The next section of the Recruit Me 3.0 Athletic Scholarship Manual is Choose the Right Camps and Showcases. In this section, I cover camps can be good for instruction and exposure. The hard thing is to know whether to spend the money and go to an instruction camp or an exposure camp. Also, showcases will allow more coaches to see you. And one of the most important things and things that people don't think about is to let coaches know you will be there. 
Find out what colleges are going to be there and write a short email and let them know in advance that you will be there. Key points on choosing the right camp and showcase. Be selective. Camps and showcases are expensive. When choosing a camp, go to ones at schools that are on your list or to ones where coaches from your list will be attending. Showcases will allow you to be seen by many coaches in one place. Things to discuss. What camps or showcases am I interested in? What other schools do I want to look at for camps? What is our budget for camps and showcases? The next section of the Recruit Me 3.0 Athletic Scholarship Manual is Register with the NCAA Eligibility Center. Before you'll be considered as an NCAA student-athlete candidate, you must register with the NCAA Eligibility Center. The Eligibility Center will validate your transcripts, test scores, and proof of graduation once that happens to certify you that you have met the core courses requirements and that your GPA, SAT, and SAT scores meet the minimum qualifications for incoming freshman student-athletes. In this section, we talk about check the core courses requirements, that you should register at the beginning of your junior year. And actually, we talked about NCAA Eligibility Center, but if you're planning on playing NAIA, you need to go to playnaia.org for their Eligibility Center. Key points to register with the NCAA or NAIA Eligibility Center. You must register with the NCAA Eligibility Center to be considered as an NCAA student-athlete. You should plan with your counselor no later than the first semester of your sophomore year to assure that you've met your core course requirements by the time you graduate. You should register with the center at the beginning of your junior year. Things to discuss. Do I need to make any changes in my planned courses to meet the core courses requirements? And when will I be registering for the eligibility center? The next section of the Recruit Me 3.0 Athletic Scholarship Manual is Parent-Athlete Teamwork. Parents have an important role, as does the student-athlete. This is not a sprint, but a marathon and you will need each other for encouragement, support, and sharing the workload. If you're a student athlete, here are things that you can focus on. Your academics, becoming a better athlete, communication with coaches, and asking a parent or an adult mentor to help you through the process. And for the parents, be an encourager, handle the administration, discuss the process with your son or daughter. If you work together as a team, each carrying out his or her role, the whole process will be less stressful. Key points to the parent-athlete teamwork. The student-athlete's focus should be on academics, improving athletically, and communicating with the coaches. The parent's focus should be on encouraging your son or daughter and handling the administration. Things that you can discuss. How can we work most effectively as a team on this project? The next section of the Recruit Me 3.0 Athletic Scholarship Manual is the importance of your academics. You may be one of the best athletes in the area. But if you do not perform in the classroom, you will disqualify yourself from many schools. As an athlete, you have extra time pressures that most students don't have. You have practices, personal workouts, road trips, and competitions that cut into your time available for study. But you also have an advantage over other students. To rise to the level that you've attained as a top athlete, you have already learned discipline. You've learned to follow a plan and to press on even when you don't really want to. That's one of your advantages. Key points to the importance of your academics. Coaches won't consider you, no matter how good you are, if your academics fall well below the standards of their school. When you excel in the classroom, you open up possibilities and you have an advantage over other student-athletes competing for the same scholarship. Things to discuss. How do you feel about your current academic situation and your grades? Parents, how do you feel? If necessary, what can be done to improve? Are there any study habits that could be better? What are your academic goals? Use these key points and discussion points to advance your journey to that athletic scholarship. This was a sneaky but information-filled advertisement for the Recruit Me 3.0 athletic scholarship system. Not only do you get a 200-plus page manual and workbook, listen to episode 243 for more information on the workbook, but you get videos that walk you through the recruiting process and interviews with recruiting experts. So don't spend thousands of dollars on a recruiting service. Give the Recruit Me 3.0 Athletic Scholarship System a try. I have a combo special where you not only get the Recruit Me 3.0 system, but you get a $35 valued QR Recruiter Draft Tag. Go to qrrecruiter.com for more information on the draft tag. Give it a try, and if the system doesn't work for you, then there's a 90-day money-back guarantee. And you get to keep the QR Recruiter Draft Tag. Contact me at brent at recruit-me.com if you have any questions or comments about recruiting. Join me next Tuesday for 15 minutes that will change your athletic scholarship future.